Hi, everyone. Welcome to what I hope will be the world's shortest statistics lecture. But we are starting a whole new chapter with a whole new idea. That is estimating a population parameter based on information we collect from a sample. And I want to do that by talking about hedgehogs. Let's say scientists are studying a newly discovered species of hedgehog and would like to know the average length of an adult of this species. We're going to let x denote the length of a adult hedgehog of this species. And of course, as usual, mu will denote the population mean length. Obviously, we can't find and measure every hedgehog of this species, and so we'll never know mu beyond a shadow of our doubt. But it's our job to estimate mu. That means we want to come up with an interval that we're pretty sure mu is in. In this example, we want to find a, an interval that we're 90% sure contains mu. That's called a confidence interval for mu, a 90% confidence interval for mu. Based on our experience with other species of hedgehogs, we're going to assume two things. First, that the length of hedgehogs is distributed normally. So we know what the normal curve looks like. We'll assume that the length of a hedgehog of this species, based on our experience with other species of hedgehog, is distributed normally. It will be symmetric and have that bell shape. Secondly, we're going to assume that the standard deviation, the population standard deviation for this species of hedgehog, for its length, is 5 centimeters. We go ahead and collect a random sample of 20 adult hedgehogs of this species, making sure to randomize as best we can, and find that for our sample, the sample mean is 25 centimeters. So if that's going to be our best guess currently, based on our sample, for the population mean, we hope if we come up with any sort of interval that we hope is 90% sure to contain mu, it's going to be centered at 25 centimeters. It's going, to, it's going to go E units down from 25 centimeters to U, E units above 25 centimeters. So on a number line, that's going to look like this. We have an interval that goes from 25 minus E to 25 plus E. Obviously, 25 centimeters is right in the middle. And we want that to be 90 per, we want to be 90% sure that that contains our population mean mu. Obviously, the bigger we make E, the more sure we are that mu is in there, but the less that we're actually saying. I mean, if we say, okay, well, E is going to be, uh, e is going to be 15, then we're saying that, okay, well, we're pretty sure that uh, the average length of a hedgehog of this species is going to be somewhere between 25 minus 15, that would be 10, to 25 plus 15, that would be 40. It's almost certainly we can make a tighter interval than that. The tighter we make the interval, the smaller we make the interval, the more we're actually saying. Uh, but the tighter we make the interval, the less sure we are uh, that mu is in there. So we want to make the interval as tight as possible and still be 90% sure that the actual population mean mu is is in there. So that now that we know all the terminology, once again, just to review the question, we want to find a 90% confidence, confidence interval. That's an interval where 90% sure will contain mu. So a confidence interval for mu, assuming that x is normal, that was one of our assumptions, and that we know sigma, and sigma is 5 centimeters, based on a sample of size 20. So we collect 20 of these uh, hedgehogs of this species, and we measure their lengths for each one, and we find that our sample mean is 25 centimeters. So once again, we know that our interval is going to be centered at 25 centimeters. That's our best guess for mu. And so it goes from 25 centimeters minus some number, which we're calling E, uh, to 25 centimeters plus some number. That's still the number E. And the only thing that's left to do is to find E. And we have a formula. I'm just telling you that we have a formula for E. E is equal to Z sub C sigma divided by the square root of n. So we already know what sigma is. That's just the uh, population standard deviation that we already know is 5 centimeters. We already know what n is. That's 20. The only thing that you don't know is zc. So I'm going to tell you right now that c is that 90%. That doesn't mean zc is 90%. But I'm going to tell you how to find zc in just a second. But the c is 90% or 0 0.9. To find zc, we're going to go ahead and dig out your uh, table of normal distribution. I'm going to show you a little portion at the, at the lower corner of that table. So if you have your table of normal distribution and you look down in the 
uh, lower left hand corner, you see this little tiny table down here. So you're going to look for 0.9 or 90 percent. That's your C. That's your level of confidence. And you'll look across and you'll see the number 1.645. For C equals 0.9, then ZC is going to be 1.645. So as I said, for Z equals 0.9 or 90%, our ZC is going to be 1.645. We looked that up in the table. And so our E, our error, or uh, is uh, ZC sigma divided by the square root of n. So we put in our 1.645. Oops, that shouldn't say minus. That should say times. That's just going to be 1.645 times 5 centimeters divided by the square root of 20, and that should come out to 1.84 centimeters. So our 94% our 90% confidence interval goes from 25 centimeters minus 1.84 centimeters to 25 centimeters plus 1.84 centimeters. In other words, we're 90% sure that our population mean is somewhere between 23.16 centimeters, that's just 25 minus 1.84, to uh, and uh, 26.84 centimeters. Mu is somewhere in that range. We're 90% sure it's somewhere in that range based on our assumptions and the information that we got from our sample. So that our, our sample uh, said that, you know, of course the sample standard mean, the sample mean was 25 centimeters. That's where the 25 centimeters came from. And that's right in the middle of our confidence, confidence interval. So we're finished the problem, but I do want to call attention to two different things. And those are our assumptions. And they might seem a little weird to you. We don't always have uh, the x, you know, whatever our uh, random variable is distributed normally. If x is distributed normally, then we can do this for any size sample. This, this technique will work for any size sample. If x is not distributed normally, we have to go back to our sample size is at least 30. If our sample size is at least 30, then we can use this technique. If our sample size is less than 30, then, and we know that the, uh, the sample isn't distributed, it, the, the you know, variable isn't distributed normally, then we're in a little bit of trouble. We can't use this technique directly. Um, if the, if the, um, the variable is distributed very, very, you know, abnormally, very, you know, if it's skewed a lot to one direction, even 30 might be enough. We might need 50 or 100 uh, before we are relatively confident that we have a good confidence, confidence interval. The other thing is, it might seem a little weird to assume that we know sigma, but we don't know mu. That happens sometimes. It sort of happened in this case because we said, okay, well, from other species, we already know something about sigma. Um, but it is a little bit weird to assume that we know sigma uh, and, and not mu. So in, in the next section, we're going to take a look at estimating mu when we don't know sigma.